This podcast features adult content not suitable for listeners under the age of 18. You have been warned. Previously on Back to the Story. Um, and as you watch this when you see blackness, like a dark cloud rising up slowly above the tree line with flakes of green and almost a tornado of various birds. You see the orbs are actually their eyes as they're rapidly just spinning around. Trying to parry it with a sword. And it looks like he's not going to, and you just see kind of like a, just, it looks like a glimmer of light, and it doesn't hit. So what does that look like as you just take out all of them? (laughs) You ready to jump back in here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Camera. Right. So jumping back in, um, you'll just finish off the last one as the bear crushes it beneath its massive paws. Um, a few seconds go by with no apparent um, changes or any new things rushing out of the woods. Um, it is still not long after dark. It's maybe be 9, 10 o'clock at night. It's still pretty dark besides the lanterns and the fire. Um, and you'll have these slain creatures at your feet. What do you do? Fucking Valren. Um, Calvin, you're, I'm assuming, the most experienced at harvesting things from creatures. Do you want to get those horns off of them? Yeah. Before I change it back, uh, I just want to smell the blood of the creatures. I don't know, can I sense the corruption in it? Is it anything even familiar? Okay. So, Calvin, roll me survival as you're removing the horns. Ezekiel, give me a probably a nature check. Bear does have keen smell. Uh, we'll say it advantage. Six either way. Related. <laughs> Got a so fifteen. I'm not an incredibly smart man. So, Calvin, you are uh, you're able to kind of partially break these things off the skull, um, and you can use a knife of some sort to kind of begin to cut them um, separated from it take maybe an hour or so to get all of them, but you can do so. Um, get all four sets of horns. Ezekiel, it's, I mean, there's a lot of gore everywhere and a lot of mixing of blood, and it's hard to tell. They didn't look normal, but as far as scent goes, it's hard to tell. All right, I'll change back and I'll give Calvin a hand to speed up the process. Okay, you can probably do it in half an hour if, Calvin, if you're helping me. is that the knife that you gave me when we met Orsisis? I have been looking everywhere for that thing. What? Uh, uh, what now? I thought I had lost it. Did you get that knife? That was the mm-hmm. one you made, right? Uh, yeah, it's a, I did make this knife. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah, I thought I lost it. I'm glad you mm-hmm. found it. Oh, no, I got it. It's, yeah, okay. I guess. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I got knives, I think, maybe. Okay. Just worried I had misplaced it, so. But it's technically yours. Oh, do you, do you do you want it back? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. I got kind of attached to it, but. Oh well, I mean, as soon as he's done, he just kind of wipes it on his breast plate or whatever, and just kind of like, there you go. I put it back where I've always had it on my hip. Well, where I used to always have uh, it. How how long did you? How long have you not had it in game? Like a since, month or so. Yeah, since she's been revived. Like I took it uh, during the ceremony. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Grave robber. I now have all of my starting equipment back. Thank you. Klaus, um, do we have a, an understanding of, I guess, the source of this kind of corruption? Um, like, would Ball know, is this just like a natural corruption? Or, um, for example, like using a combination of my divine sense and um, to detect poison and disease, does this seem like evil in nature or just kind of chaotic? Uh, seems evil in nature, and Calvin uh, and Ezekiel and Amazon were kind of talking about this earlier with the group, knowing that it's some sort of curse um, on the Valgrith, and uh, learned that uh, through Amson's understanding of the stories from Ego, that when other creatures are consumed the blood of the Valgrith, they are corrupted into these things. It's some sort of curse. This is a disease and more of a curse. And what if they were to consume the blood of the Valorin? Uh, I mean, are these dead bodies just kind of tainted for for life, or is there like 
anything to salvage from their corpses for the forest. I, would, I mean, uh, you're not sure. You know that they were cursed in life, and you're not sure. I mean, they still look, even with their horns removed, they still look uh, misshapen. They're the size of their paws aren't the right size. Their shoulder blades are shifted forward almost. They still look corrupted, even as dead bodies. Okay. Um, so maybe while, uh, um, I guess, uh, Calvin and Ezekiel are collecting um, our trophies, um, Ball's going to start to collect um, whatever scraps, for example, the big pile of birds, um, and just start feeding them into the fire. Okay. Um, I'm going to help with that, but as as we are, do I notice any, like, do the birds look normal now that they're dead, or is there anything to indicate uh, that they were cursed? Uh, similar with the Valren, they, some of them, like the crows, look mostly normal, um, though some of them are missing fur or feathers, but there are other birds that normally don't have this dark of feathers, and so it looks like that's how their appearance were changing. Uh, some of them have different colored feathers, generally darker. Some are missing the feathers entirely, um, like owls that have almost buzzard-like uh, skulls at this point uh, without the uh, the feathers. And so it, they all look corrupted in some way. Maybe we should take in some of the more obviously corrupted ones for the bounty, see if they'll be accepted. That might be a good idea. I will cleanse the rest. So I'll say you can probably get maybe five-ish, kind of obviously bigger ones, like an owl, bigger ravens or crows that look more obviously corrupted. The others are smaller. And then I'm going to take ten minutes while we're doing all of this and cast Prayer of Healing. Um, so, raise your hand if you need healing. Jess, Hanson, um, is Ball all right? Or do you need more healing, Ball? No, I feel good. Okay. You can take then, a little bit if you have it. Sure. I can do up to six creatures, so I could do all of a second place. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess, I don't know how your spell works exactly. Ball can use, I'm one HP off. Okay. Well, I'll just give everybody, because it's up to eight, so. Or up okay. to six creatures, so. Do you get to split it among it, however you want? No, it's just going to be, we all regain it, so I just want to Okay. Save. So that's 13 points to everyone who needs it. So a half hour or so kind of goes by with uh, Vesper healing, Bull and Ellery trying to burn away some of these creatures. The fire simply isn't big enough for all of them at once, but you can slowly work on them um, after Calvin and Ezekiel take off the horns. Um, and about 30, 45 minutes later, you have most of that taken care of. Would these corpses count as flammable? Flammable? Yeah. Not, not especially. There's still a lot of blood and juice in the flesh. Okay. The fur will burn off, of course, first, but with this small campfire, not easily. The birds, yes, but the bigger creatures, not not so much. But you do put enough in there to where the f smell of flesh um, and normally cooking meat kind of has a nice smell to it, but these smell awful. The smell of the meat is just, smells like rotten meat garbage being burnt. Even the smoke that flows up is dark, thick. I'm just going to kind of kneel down off in the corner and uh, say a prayer for these creatures. Just hoping that in death the corruption is cleansed. So, mm -hmm. what now? Is this still be... Sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was just wondering what the plan should be, whether we should try and get some sleep, or see if more come wandering by. I imagine we've taken care of the closest ones, though I did not expect so many. Get some rest, see if we can find any in the morning. Sounds best to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm happy to keep watch for a shift if y'all need it. I still think we should double up on watches. Definitely. I'll take mid-watch. I'll watch with Hillary. I can watch with Ezekiel. Calvin, you right. and I? <clears throat> All right. He nods us sagely. <clears throat> Sounds, yeah. That's, a, that's probably the best, best plan I, I heard all day. That's a good one. What a, exactly what we're going to do. He leans into Amson. 
What are we doing? Uh, taking a watch together. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so you'll clean up as best you can, prepare to camp, and whoever starts off the watches, whichever pair. I guess Ball and I will go first. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, do you want to roll and I'll help you? Sure. Perception 17, if I have advantage. Yep, okay. So as you and Ball uh, stay up, You'll look out and can see the sky, though moonless, is dark, but the clouds do begin to clear. It's still chilly um, as spring has just begun, and they're still shaking off the fall of winter. You can see the glowing orange and red waves off the cliff about 80 feet down uh, to the east and crash against the cliff side. And you can see north, uh, now that you have time to really take it in, you can see north the cliffs begin to raise higher and higher. Um, Ball, you've seen this before. It looks like you're getting close within maybe a day or so of the Cliffs of Nava, uh, which is where Orsesis resides. And you see the cliffs rise slowly 80, 100, 200, up to three to 400 feet high, these cliff sides. But as you do, um, you don't notice any sort of crickets begin to chirp again. You hear every now and then you hear a wolf howl or a bird chirp, but uh, nothing lunges at you. Um, it's pretty quiet for your watch. While we're keeping watch. So, Ball, I couldn't help but notice in that little tussle back there, you have similar abilities to my own. Do you also follow one of the gods? Yes, I am a follower of AI. Who do you follow? Oh, I follow a Simba. I do not know this one. Or maybe well, I do. Is... I will consult the DM. Well, I'm I, happy I, to explain. He is one of the older gods. He is, well, he's this world itself. Everything around us. And what does he believe? Belief is a strong word, in my opinion. He believes a Sigma is every part of us. He is what the natural world does. It doesn't always make sense. In fact, sometimes it very clearly goes against all laws we know. He simply wishes the world to be in balance. And I help him reach those goals. And I work to give those that do not, do not wish well upon others a second chance. Interesting. And everyone deserves this second chance? I believe so. And as I say that, I'm throwing, I guess, more remains of um, the Valren into the uh, into the fire. I'll be helping you deal with it. It's good that we burn it. These creatures are wrong. I'm not sure how. I believe the fire will cleanse them. And what will remain will be pure. Sometimes a fire is necessary. For new growth. Anyway, I'm glad I seem to be. Well, then I'll be running into you folks a little bit more often. It's going to be a long boat ride, and I think y'all keep everything interesting. I do not know if you will be interesting. Well, trust me, you will. Thank you for your help today. Of course. Anything I can do to help. Cleanse abominations from this world. I'm happy to do. Let me share them all. Absolutely. Anyway, about time to wake the others, isn't it? Hmm. And then I'll throw one more and stand up. Start to make my way over. Um, I believe it's a Vesper and Ellery that are next. Mm-hmm. So I'll go to wake uh, wake Vesper up. All right. So you woke up the next shift. I'm in sleep. And Vesper and Ellery, you guys take over. You guys can either one of you roll perception advantage or both of you roll. Um, I'll roll. Okay. Go ahead, take the advantage then. You can actually see. Uh, 15. Okay. Um, yeah, so as, yeah, as your watch goes by, you immediately notice um, after Ezekiel and Ball go, there's not many, uh, bodies left. Most of it has been burned. The smell is pretty strong. 
but most of it has been burned at this point. There's just a few pieces here and there. You don't notice much besides the waves crashing against the, the coastline. So while we watch, after I know Ball and um, Zeke are asleep, um, I'm going to sit a little closer to Ellery. So I wanted to talk about um, earlier. Look, Vesper, I don't need some kind of lecture on... I'm not giving you a lecture. I'm... I want to explain that I'm not... I just want to understand. Because I have a very hard time imagining that a chance for... For a second chance is worse than killing someone. Than death. And I just want to understand... And I'm worried that something happened to my very good friend at the hands of people I'm supposed to be able to trust. <laughs> Nothing happened to me. I just sat in a cell with my hands chained to a wall for eight months. Inside check. That is a natural one. So then what else happened to the people around you? Enough for me to know that if we send anyone down there, that's not going to be a second chance. I mean, did you look at the list of crimes that these people committed? I did. Chances are they're going to end up executed anyway. And at least if we take care of that job, then they won't have to wait out their last days down there. I don't know what happened. I won't tell anyone else, I promise. Just, I want to know. I've been thinking I might want to... Well, no, I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I need to talk about it. And I've been thinking that... Once we get away from en Embershore, once we're on a ship and have some distance, then maybe I can. Okay. I know you might be hesitant because I have friends in the Covenant. Because Dia is so close to them, but your family, and you always come first. I'm more worried that you're going to run off and do something reckless. Me. Well, you can get kind of confrontational sometimes. I mean, fair. Kind of glance at Calvin. <laughs> okay. Just, can you trust me on this? Yes. Thank you. I just wrapped my arm around her. I'm going to lean on her a little bit. I'm done for the evening, if you are. <laughs> All right. So the rest of your night goes by, the uh, rest of your watch goes by uneventful, and that brings up to the last watch uh, with Calvin uh, and Anderson as you take over. You can roll one of you, roll it at advantage, or both of you can separately. Would you like to do the honors? Because my perception sucks. Uh... Full pleasure, my perception sucks as well, but I will do it. Well, my perception's plus one. Oh, that's that's totally better than mine. But I'll still do it if you want me to, that's cool. Oh, go ahead. Okay, cool. Uh, that's not bad. That's terrible. 17. Okay. Um, as you guys are kind of watching the woods and occasionally glancing over to the... Uh, orange and yellow underlit sea the waves um as you are looking over there you do notice the waves shift for a moment like suddenly turn in a different direction it passes and it doesn't happen again and a few more minutes go by and nothing else really jumps out occurs or changes do we both notice that or do i notice that alone uh because he's given you advantage both of y'all are kind of both notice this <clears throat> Maybe it was a large sea creature. Or it could have been Orsesis. He doesn't live too far from here. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't look like it's going to make a entrance right now. And we are not dead. This is true. We are not. Just something, something we should keep an eye out for, I guess. Yep. Keeping an eye. So, hey, what's been going on? You know, that's a very general question, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, catch up. What do you want to catch up on? Whatever. 
is going on in your head? I don't know. You tell me. What What would you like to tell me right now? You have one, one thing that you can tell me, and it's in it before we go to sleep, and then that's that's it. That's not all you can tell me. What would you tell me? What would I tell you? Then he starts crossing his fingers, and he starts whispering on his breath, Please be a story. Please be a story. <laughs> Let me see what I got here. All right. So, you know the name of my horse, right? Bo Jackson. <laughs> no. No, I do not. All right. I named him Fernal after a legendary horse, also called Fernal. Fernal is the name of the horse king. It's said that there is a river where the stallions and steeds and horses of the regal plains are birthed. It's kind of a legendary area, a legendary river in the, in, in the regal plains. And it is said that because of the horse king Fernal's spirit that resides there, the horses there are supposed to be the strongest, fastest, and most reliable, and most fearless in all the lands. And I go into more detail about that, because Amson has more information, but I, as a player, do not. Uh, yeah, Amson, you continue uh, talking about this this horse, which is almost like a, a river spirit guardian, something in between a living actual horse and some sort of river water spirit guardian. Wow, that's that's not a lot. That's not at all like my horses back on the farm. They just kind of pull a plow and shit everywhere. It's uh, it's actually kind of kind of nice after you get accustomed to it. But uh, but it doesn't sound like you know that's that's a majestic horse animal. Yes, the horses there are quite majestic beings. <laughs> Far more, um, oh, what's the word? Well, I guess regal than farm horses. Indeed. Regal. That was the, that's the word I was going to use, but you, you took it from me before I could say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. So anyway, back to watching the skies or whatever, and we see nothing, and it's the morning. Okay, so yeah, you'll uh, talk about these things and then watch, um, and eventually your end, uh, your rest or watch comes to an end uh, with the sun rising up um, across the ocean in front of you. The glow of the orange kind of fades away as the sun glistening off the waters uh, overtakes it. The sun is bright. It's a beautiful day, windy. There's a few white clouds that kind of pass overhead um, as the rest of you all wake up as well. What do you do? Hey, how far are we from Arcesis? About a day. Do we all want to go and maybe see him? If we've got the time? How much time do we have left? I was going to try and do the daddy thing. It's not going to work. DM, <laughs> how long do we have left? <laughs> uh, I mean, you'll still have like near like seven days. About seven days? About a week? Yeah, we could probably say hi. Probably run to more Valren. Either today or right. tomorrow night, and then head back. Ezekiel, have you ever met a dragon? I oh, I can't say that I have. Let's go say hi. How long has it been? Four years? Mm-hmm. Four years. Well, Calvin saw him sooner than that. But... Wow. You know, after that fight last night, it occurs to me just how easily we all could have died. The last time we were up this way. Good thing you had a healer. <laughs> That's for sure. Do you all tend to get yourselves in a bit of trouble often? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd say it was when we came up here that was our first bit of real trouble. Not well, hence, you know, stop the scale. Mm-hmm. Melly's the one who gets in the most trouble. Which is amazing, because she never leaves the house. Unless it's to be with us. Yeah. Maybe we're just bad influences on her. I mean, I know I am. (laughs) 
Ezekiel, would you like to know the story about what happened last time we were in this area? I mean, it seems like we have a long way to travel. The story sounds like a lovely way to pass the time. All right. Well, it all started with Calvin. It always does. And I tell him the story about how we were on the beach, got chased by a dragon, what it was wounded, Calvin ran off, got chased by the dragon, the rest of us left, Calvin de somehow decoded the language of the dragon enough to know that it wanted help with its wounds, Calvin made a scale, and we had to adventure as level zero teenagers to go and... <laughs> Give this steel smith scale to a dragon in order to put it back on. Wow. That sounds like you had an interest in childhood. I mean, that's an adjective for it, sure. So how long does it take to get to the cliffs where we encountered the Volgrith and Orsesis? Uh, so it's about a day away, so you were kind of talking as you're, as you're traveling. With and the good. As we travel, as we as we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Mage Armor. Just to okay. be prepared this time. Yep. Um and you guys are traveling along what used to be a trail, but it's clear no one has ever taken this in a while. But every now and then you see like a cobblestone that was clearly molded. Um but you guys travel for the better part of the day, several hours, with the ocean to your right and to the left the evergreen forest. Some of it still has snow on the ground and on the trees, but it's starting to fall out, starting to melt um, as you head north along the sea um, for several hours. You can stop every now and then to stop, rest up, eat some rations, and then move forward. And as the sun begins to set, um, the cliffs have slowly been rising over the, this day. And as the sun begins to set is when you reach kind of the peak of these cliffs. Um, you come around the corner and you see them stretching out, creating an almost a cove where you know Orsisa's layer to be. Um, these 300 to 400 foot uh, sheer cliffs. And that's about when you get to these cliffs as the sun sets. Hey, Daddy, uh, does Divine Sense like trigger anything, like pick up anything as we're going along? I'm just using it every now and then. And specifically, uh, does the, the, has, do we know, do I know if the Valoran? Has uh, has any ping off of that? Uh, what are the? I'm not sure if it actually does this creature. <laughs> I don't think it does either. But it's it's celestial fiends and undead. No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, so no, nothing. Uh, oh, do nothing aberrations? Uh, it's does it do a, aberrations as well? It, it doesn't, doesn't. In my ping, notes, it doesn't ping. Even if that is, it doesn't ping um, the creature. But you do ping probably a little something from Ezekiel. Um, a little note of divinity, strangely. Says that no, I, I won't. I won't do this. I was gonna say it's. It's. It says here that uh, it registers as some sort of it's like a, a a noxious order or a heavenly music. What what kind of note would he be uh, offering? Um, probably a full chorded G singing in your ear. If I had to pick a note, I'm gonna turn off divine sense. But yeah, besides that, you don't sense anything in particular that jumps out at you. Okay. Thank you, Daddy. Yeah, so you have reached these cliffs overlooking them as the sun is setting, and you can start to see the glow of the orange underneath the waves beginning to come into sight. Uh, so it's at this point that I'm telling the story about how we were right here, and the Volgrith was right over there, and <laughs> we all got onto our ceases. And then I point over to, like, down further down the cliffs from where we came. And there stood Melly all of a sudden for no explicable reason whatsoever. <laughs> she jumped off the cliff after us. And just continue on with that story. As we've been walking, I've been sticking pretty close to Ball. Just kind of, I guess, reminded of how things went the last time we were up here. So, uh, is this, uh, dragon gonna be fine with y'all just stopping by? Probably. Well, how do we get in? Or announce ourselves? 
Well, last time, Calvin dangled over the edge of the cliff. Um, would I have developed a way to contact? I mean, having tried to stay in contact with Orsisis, would I have a, would there be a known method of con- contacting or trying to reach out to him? Uh, what worked last time was throwing rocks over the water, dropping them down, uh, hopefully notifying if it was beneath it. Like we're in a John Hughes movie, just throw rocks at his window. Yep, that's what I, that's what Calvin starts doing. Calvin stands on the edge of the cliff with a with a boombox. I love say anything, so I'm down. He has a big old trench coat. <laughs> All right, so you you do that with a boombox shaped rock and throw it over uh, the water as it splashes in, sinking down. I uh, mean, throw a few others as well. You do that a few times. The sun sets. 10, 15 minutes go by, nothing changes. Besides, it's dark now. So, did anyone else get a little worried when that bird yesterday seemed to indicate that the Volgrith was somewhere over the water? Oh, maybe. This dragon lives in the water? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Maybe we should make camp here and see if he shows up later? Sure. I can also climb down the cliff. I don't know. It looks very steep. I could that climb down the cliff. Issue. I can get there quite easily, and I can take someone with me. Anyone but Paul. Sorry, big boy. I'll go. All right. Just uh, brace yourself for a minute. And I will kneel down and go giant spider. Yeah. Okay. Kneel down. <laughs> Suddenly, out of your torso, these uh, multiple legs come out as you kind of crumple up into this giant. What is it? Like a brown recluse-looking spider, maybe? Yeah, I imagine. Furry tarantula. Like, what is it? My picture is furry tarantula, but I actually imagine one like one of those big body and really spindly leg ones. Oh, uh, granddaddy long leg. Yeah, sort of like that. Not yeah, somewhere like that. So. And I'm just going to, like, kneel down and with my, like, ten hundred eyes just look at Vesper, like, climb on! And those eyes are, like, similar to his normal eyes. I assume. Like, greenish, almost. Okay. <laughs> I will climb on, reluctantly. And I'm going to go ahead and cast Spider Climb so I can go with them. Okay. What does that feel like when you do that? Um, as uh, Vesper is climbing onto the spider... Ew, 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 um, ew. So, I think the way it looks is that I'm I'm holding the mirror up in one hand, kind of facing up, and I just like press the fingertips of the other hand into it, uh, onto the surface, and um, then there's that uh, kind of bluish white glow that my magic typically takes when it's not some other energy form around my fingertips and around the soles of my feet. Okay. And as that energy glows and you take your fingertips off the mirror, it's almost sticky and you have to force your fingers off the mirror. But as you do, you can kind of feel the energy transfer down to your feet. And um, do you all walk off the edge? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you walk to the corner turn and suddenly gravity shifts and for you uh, Ellery down is now the wall it's, it's a strange gravity has shifted for you uh, for the others it's more about the Ezekiel spider form is able to easily grab hold of the wall um, and walk down as Vesper holds tight um, as you'll come down you'll see that cave uh, that y'all saw before several of you and as you look in you see uh, a number of bones uh, set up um, you actually see a number of metal weapons that have been stacked as well that um, are sort of, some of them are melted together. You know, I see bones of larger creatures, smaller creatures, uh, a numerous amount. Looks like something's been feeding here. Um, and you'll continue down closer and closer um, in the darkness towards the waves. And as you get closer enough, you can see a little bit better, those of you without dark vision, because the embers beneath. Um, the waves are glowing orange, backlighting the cliff as you get close to the edge of the water. You're maybe now 10, 15 feet above where the waves are slamming. 
uh, into the bluff. Um, from here, can we see any sign of those plants underneath the water that reacted to Orsesis in the past? Uh, make a perception check. Oh, six. Um, looking around, you don't see any plants at all. Um, you just see the waves landing against the cliffside. side. Great. I wonder if he's moved on. I kind of click my little spider pincers together and then point a finger towards that cave. Like, do we go there? Uh, I don't know. We could check the cave. I think I could keep running down the cliff underneath the water a little bit, hold my breath, see if I can see anything. You can't cast that spell on me, can you? Um, not on both of us at the same time. Do you want to switch? Then you climb up on Ezekiel, because I don't need to breathe. Mm. Yeah, sure, let's go for it. All right. Okay, so, uh, so you'll switch. You cast the spell again, uh, this time on Vesper. And Ellery and Ezekiel, spider form, do you all go back up towards the cliff, or towards the cave? Uh, I would or wait. I would rather wait for Vesper. Yeah. Okay. So I'll wait um, as Vesper, uh, suddenly you feel gravity shift, and now down is the side um, of the cliff. Um, and as you begin to walk into the waves, Amson, Calvin, Ball, are you all guys doing anything up, up top? I think just keeping watch is what Ball would be doing. Um, I think I'm, Ball's a bit on edge because I didn't, you didn't expect so many, uh, Ball, I keep messing it up. It's Valren? Or the small yeah. ones, right? Yeah, uh, yeah he Valren. didn't expect so many Valren to be around. He's kind of under the impression that, yeah, they're still around, but not quite so many. Um, so he's on alert, just kind of looking at the, um, the tree line and up above. For... Okay. Yeah, roll a perception check. Amson and Calvin, are you guys doing anything in particular or just guarding? Uh, just... I would think that Amson would start setting up a, a small campsite. Okay. Yeah. Begin that process. Calvin? Uh, also, keeping the guard. Shield and spear at the ready, just kind of watching the backs. Okay. Uh, a little perception as well with Ball, as Amston is setting up camp, getting campfire set up and everything else. That's a 16th for Ball. 11. Okay. Um, as you're looking out, you don't see any movement from the tree lines or any cloud of black uh, swirling of birds coming from the tree lines as well. Ball, you do see a bird flying overhead. Or you just see a speck of green glowing because it's dark. You only see it for like five seconds and then it disappears. But it like, kind of seemed like it was so far away that maybe it hasn't quite noticed it's, us. Yeah, it's, it's pretty far away, but it is sort of above you, but it is, it is pretty far away or it was before it disappeared. Okay. I'll make note of that and just kind of maybe pay a bit extra attention to that area. See okay. if it reappears. Okay, so y'all continue watching. Amson is setting up camp. Ellery is hanging on to Spider Ezekiel as Vesper, you <laughs> plunge into the water. Uh, make a uh, strength athletics check. We'll say. Oh, God. Just to keep the waves from bashing you off your feet. That's a 12. Okay. Let's see. As soon as you walk in and the first wave comes, you immediately... <laughs> Um, are slammed against the wall and are kind of sucked down and back as the waves come out. As it, But as you get beneath the waves, it, the force begins to diminish. And you get far enough down, swimming downward, uh, to where you can reconnect to the uh, cliffside and walk down easier than it would be swimming. And it's a good 60, 80 feet down, and you start to see through the uh, glowing orange waters the ruined ship that's cracked in half. I mean, you see the hole in the center. Do you continue? Yeah, I'm going to make my way to that. Okay. Um, you kind of have to jump and release off of the wall. Um, other, or, or you can walk down L-shaped all the way to the bottom and walk over. Yeah, um, give me a perception check as you get closer. Or at disadvantage, I'm guessing, because it's probably dark or are there stones? Um, probably a straight roll between the okay. glowing orange embers um, and just the waves and the murkiness. That is just 16. 
Okay. Um, looking around, you see, and it's hard to remember because it was four years ago, but the ship is in more pieces than it used to be. It's just more destroyed than it once was. Um, getting closer and kind of getting to where you can look down into the hole, there was once a lot of plants that grew um, or they glowed and almost hummed, singing almost. Um, and you see no plants. You see the remnants of them hanging, but they're not glowing. They don't even look alive as you look down there. And you hear nothing besides this, the turmoil of the waves above you. How long have I been down here? Uh, walking down probably maybe five minutes, going on ten as you walk down and an L shut across. Do I have an estimate of how long it would take me to get into his, like, his actual lair? Rough estimate, maybe 15 minutes, maybe. It's hard to say. It was four years ago, and the dragon was moving very quickly, much faster than you are, but it would probably take 10, 15 minutes. Okay, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to kind of try and jog if I can. Okay, give me an athletics. Okay. Gotcha. Check to see how fast you can go. Oh, that's really good. That's a 17. Okay. Um, yeah, so you kind of jogging, half swimming uh, with your arms and running with the spider climb, keeping you on the ground. You go down the tunnel, curving up and towards the lair. For the rest of you, hanging on the wall, Ellery and Ezekiel, um, about 10, 15 minutes go by um, without any change. Do you guys just continue to wait or do you do anything differently? Um, do I see or hear anything under the waves that would cause me to worry? No. Just the waves. Then I think we're just waiting. Okay, just hanging out. And uh, up top, Amson and Ball and Calvin, are you guys just continuing watching, being careful? Yeah, that's what it would cause to happen. Okay. Uh, so yeah, another 15 minutes, 20 minutes goes by. Uh, Vesper, you do as you're jog swimming uh, through the water. Um, you eventually go through the tunnel. And along the tunnel, there were, like I said, there was tons of plants that sang, uh, sang and hummed before and glue. Um, but none of that now. Um, you see hanging dead plants. Some of it's floating. You see some of the plants are just looks like they died, like the life force left. And some looks like they have been destroyed. There's spots on the wall near the entrance of the tunnel where they look like they've been absolutely destroyed and are no longer there at all. Uh, but you continue through the tunnel and coming up out of the bottom, swimming up to the surface, uh, coming to the top, and you see these uh, the pool of water with the central sort of platform where Orsisa stayed. You see in the walls, there are a few embedded shields and a few weapons. It looks like they've been hung almost as decoration. There's only a few of them. And as you kind of come to the surface, spider climb up onto the platform, you see an empty platform. Uh, give me an investigation check as you get closer. That's a nine. A nine, okay. Uh, taking a few minutes to look around, you see some wet spots, but it's not just seawater. You see a thicker substance that looks like it's dry, dark on the rocks. Um, you see a few scales. Large, actually, almost the size of the head of a shovel. that are bronze scales. A few have been strewn about. But other than that, you don't see much. Okay, I'm going to take uh, one or two of the scales that I can carry them, and then I'm going to head back. Okay. Yeah, you take uh, two of the scales there um, without issue. Jump back in, swim back out, uh, swim jogging through, uh, coming out the other side. And how long does that spell last? Like an hour? An hour. Okay. Uh, yes, you should have enough time getting there, coming out, to walk along the waves. Give me a um, athletics check. Seven. Okay. It takes you a few tries to come up and then slam by the wave, knocked off, come up, slammed by the wave, knocked off. Um, but you eventually, on the third or fourth try. Yeah, we're using the silk, uh, the rope, <laughs> to kind of help you. Get above the waves before you're knocked down again and kind of catch up to where Ezekiel and Ellery are. I just look at Ellery and hold up one of the scales. Shit. It was just this and, and I think blood, dried blood. Shit. All the plants are dead and... Let's get back up to the top. Yeah. Okay, before the spell expires and, uh, and Ezekiel, we all easily move back um, up the cliffside coming up to the top. We see Ball and Calvin on guard, Anson finishing up setting up camp. 
And I would say that Amson is starting to cook some some supper. That smells good, too. I'll pop back to Ezekiel. He's not there. What? I hold up the scales. Amson kind of gives a like a face of, oh, n- come on. Like, uh, you can't be serious. Mester's just looking back at you, just like, kind of afraid. He said that it looked like it had been destroyed. Yeah. And, and all the plants, some of them are destroyed, some of them are just dead. None of them are glowing or singing or anything. And, and it looked like there might have been blood. And, and some scales, and that's all. You didn't see his body? No. So that's hopeful, but. He's well, not here. it's. It's hopeful unless he got into another tango with the Volgriff. That's what I'm worried about. Guess we're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled tonight. More so than usual. Has there been any sightings of the Volgrith lately? In Embershore? Yep. Um, no, but there has been word that, uh, some monstrosity has, uh, attacked a village to the north beyond this, the cliffs here. Uh, Did they describe it? Um, Thinking back, was a description similar? Big, uh, horns, glowing eyes. It could be something else, but it also could easily be the Valgrith. Well, there is that cave down there, and it looked like there had been something feeding down there. We could give it a look and see if there's any more information, but getting down to it isn't easy, and I don't know how many of us can actually go. I'm going to stay up here this time. Uh, if I take a rest, I can pop down there, become myself, and then still get whoever back. So if we don't mind, I might even just take a look on my own. If I'm just a big old spider, I can, I don't know, perhaps avoid detection. Sure. Can you take Calvin? Or is he too happy? If I rest up, I think I could do better, just in case I have to shift out. I only can do it once, but after a short rest, Calvin and I can go. Okay. Uh, as you guys take a short rest, eating dinner that Amson has been cooking? I'm just going to hug one of the scales. Okay. As you look at it, you can see there's some clear damage to it. It didn't just fall off or get plucked off. There's some There's some damage to it. Um, one of y'all can give me like a medicine check to see that. what kind of damage. I can't roll well, but I can still... Uh, 13? Um, you're looking Twelve. down now that you're kind of taking the short rest and can think a little more clearly. Um, and you're expecting, like, claw marks or something, but there's... It's been warped. And you're not sure how, but it's... The scale is shaped differently. But there's no clear claw or piercing marks. So it's been warped. That's kind of what you get. And the, uh, the Val Rin, when they transform... Like I guess it their it, it's their physical appearance changes as well, right? Like they they get gnarly in a sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not just horns and, and eyes. Their bone structure kind of breaks and shifts and kind of changes the the body structure as well. But so a boar might change differently than a wolf, but and that's kind of what the Valoran term. That's why it's a little loose. But as you look over the scale and as you all kind of eat something and take a rest and Ezekiel prepares to maybe go down and check out that uh, cave perch a bit more and see if there's something else down there, that's what we're going to call it for tonight. And we'll pick up next week and see what happens. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher. It's like Pandora, but for podcasts. You can download the app and the algorithm will help you discover similar shows and allow others to find ours as well. If you would like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. Alternatively, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. Or if you would like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind the scenes sneak peeks, follow us on Tumblr at back-to-the-story.tumblr.com.